it's, it's an enormous privilege to be here today. And can I just congratulate the audience? Usually when I say, hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm referring to about two other women in the room. And I think the representation you've got here today um, is fantastic. So personally, thank you for that. Um, last Thursday, I had the enormous pleasure of being one of the judges on the ICC's hackathon. And it was a very inspiring and exciting event to be part of. Um, listening to some very innovative, visionary young people put forward their ideas for what they felt cricket should be looking like was time fascinatingly well spent. But you can hear from better people than me on this. Um, I'd like to welcome to the stage um, my fellow judges on this, I'm sorry, I've gone analog. Um, Finn Bradshaw, the ICC's Head of Digital, and Jeremiah Goldaveza, who's the SVP Global Marketing at Neom. Gents, hi. Well, it was certainly a fascinating afternoon last week, wasn't it? And, um, the job we had of choosing a winner was, was not very easy. Gents, um, can I just ask if we can raise the house lights just a little bit? We've, we've got a bit of audience interaction, if we can, please. If we can just start out by asking a few questions. Firstly, how many people in here, stick your hand in the air, if you'd consider yourself to be a gamer? Oh, oh not so many. Um, then how many people on here have been in the metaverse or in a metaverse of some description? Surprisingly more. I'm expecting you're going to go yes with everything you know. Uh, yeah, in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Then how many people use a wearable for their own sports improvement? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and then how many of you use some form of sport tech to coach kids. Okay. And then finally, when you're listening to sport, how many of you will then tune in to an alternative form of commentary? Looks like we may have chosen the right winner, doesn't it? <laughs> so, gents, explain to me the inspiration behind the hack. What, what made the two of you get together and create something that, 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 that imaginative? So I, th I think Finn and I, um, in the early days of uh, our partnership with the ICC, wanted to find a way to reach an underrepresented group, which is really the technology-loving fans behind the game. And um, we were looking forward to see where, how the game would grow even further globally, and technology was going to be that answer. And what folks really needed was an outlet for um, them to express their... Um, their innovation, and that's where the hackathon really was, was born, to give an outlet to technologists to kind of design where the game's going to go next. Yeah, um, for, you know, at the ICC, we're always you know, looking for ways, how do we use our platform and um, the, the platforms at our disposal to um, you know, elevate the game you know, and, and inspire people, but you know, without necessarily directly funding it, you know, how do we sort of light sparks, you know, set, set sparks going around the place. And, and so you know, the, the thing that really excited me about this project was the idea of how, you know, India is like the heartbeat of cricket, but it's a nation of engineers. And I mean, I should say, like out of the 22,000 entries we had this year for the hackathon, they came from 130 different countries. Um, so it, you know, by no means is it, you know, only um, Indians entering in it, but how do we get you know the, the smartest people in the world putting their brain power towards cricket, and and you know not just solving problems that we're aware of, but you know solving problems we didn't even know existed, and um, it it's been amazing and to see the evolution from the first hackathon earlier this year in terms of the quality of the the ideas and the presentations to the one last week has been phenomenal. You know, it really feels like it has, has delivered on that um, promise. And it's one of those things in tech 
that whenever you ask anybody experienced in the world of tech, you know, what's the most common problem that they see, it's invariably it's tech for tech's sake, or people have come up with a phenomenal solution or a, a phenomenal idea or vision, but they then need to find something that it solves. When you went through the early rounds of tech, how much did you mind that vision almost superseded practicality? Or were you really open to, let's, let's just see what's out there? Yeah, I would say the first hackathon had a lot more technology, interesting use of technology in search of a product. Whereas if you look at the product that won, or the, you know, the idea that won last Thursday, like that was a pretty developed product. He, you know, th their help is about scaling distribution, you know, that yeah, they probably get a need to get their product market fit right and stuff like that. But, um, you know, so I think <laughs> we, we wanted a product rather than, a, I guess, a use of technology. I don't know, Jeremiah, you are? Yeah, and I think in the early days, we started with a, a topic that was discussed earlier today around um, fan engagement and looking at opportunities to use technology to do fan engagement. And um, actually, the technology that won the first hackathon was implemented in the ICC app and really focused on the use of augmented reality to really um, enhance the cricket viewing experience. What we found with the second hackathon was uh, interest in even more categories, um, interest in f performance analytics and how you could grow the game, uh, interest in also continued interest in fan engagement. But the one that I really loved was cricket at the grassroots which was really around technology approaches to spread the game of um, cricket even further globally. And one of the exciting ideas to kind of emerge from uh, uh, the most recent hackathon was um, identifying um, blind cricketers and um, technologies that would help spread the, grow the game um, with that um, uh, focused audience. And just the technology idea to come out of that so simple in concept, yet brilliant in execution, you know, a, a, a ball that you could hear, um, uh, a, an, a, a, an audio device that uh, allowed you to signal where the, the delivery was made. That type of technology uh, just would not have come to light without avenues like the hackathon to really showcase the technology in play. I, I, I was going to say, you know, the difference between the first hackathon and the second hackathon were there to be a third one, what would be your aspirations for something like that? Because my guess is between one and two seem to be as though that was a tremendous evolution. I think to take it overseas, we've held the first one, one in Bangalore and now one in Mumbai. Um, and I think, you know, like that naturally drove a bit more interest probably out of the Indian market. But if I come back to that initial idea of like, how do you get the world's brightest minds turning their attention towards cricket, well, you know, if we could take that to a, another that country and kind of really, you know, maybe bring people into the ecosystem who aren't, um, you know, already sort of, I guess, aware of the ICC and, and cricket, then, I, you know, who knows where we could take it from there. So, um, yeah, you know, we'd, we'd love to find a way to, to, you know, whether it's to the US or Singapore or, I don't know, you know, anywhere really, but, um, somewhere like that, I think, would really take it to the next level. Absolutely. And as a sponsor um, taking on something like the Hackathon, obviously there's the external PR, but how inspirational did your team find it? Because it wasn't just, you didn't just badge it and turn up as a judge on the day. You got really embedded. And for us, it was never really about, you know, the, the marketing awareness or the uh, public relations that you get out of doing something like this, right? Like, this is really about, um, and truly about innovation, right? Like, we are trying to um, engage some of the best technologists in the world um, uh, in a community, uh, not only around um, uh, our company, but also around um, the ICC. And so that's what we went at it from a sponsorship perspective, was like, let's create the outlet, let's create the community of technologists and just see where it goes. And I'm just excited. I, I agree with Finn with what he's saying in terms of the next iteration of this is really going to be expansion globally. Like, how do you get audiences that may not be as familiar with the game 
my hometown of San Francisco or even beyond. Um, um, there are some really talented technologists there that just want to get their hands on tough technology problems, and I think Cricket presents those. Well, I've been involved in a couple of hacks over the years, um, and I've been approached by various people over the last few days saying we're interested in doing one. As the veterans now of two hackathons, what tips would you give people out there as to what, what makes something really successful? Set a lot of time aside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, th I'm thankful that I didn't have to go through 22,000, but I did shortlist the last sort of 50, and if you give everyone the due time, that's quite long. But, but I think, um, like, from our perspective, you know, and I'm not just saying this, um, but having a partner like Neum for us, you know, like, it, it gives us the impetus to do it, but to have, you know, like, a, I don't know if we've got other sponsors in the room, but, like, I, I just love this project so much. It's maybe my favourite sort of um, thing we've created recently because it really is something created out of fresh air, and it kind of took a leap of faith from Neum. It's not like we had an established product and we we're like, hey, here's this thing we do every year. Would you like to slap your brand on it? And, you know, Neum really lent into sort of helping us um, create it and, and work out what it was. And so, you know, if you had the pressure of someone who sort of wasn't there with you as you sort of worked your way towards what it was going to be and, you know, and, and saw something in the first one and was, you know, there to back it with us again, that just, you know, from a sort of rights holder perspective, it's just so great. And it, and it kind of just, you know, um, means that you're looking forward and you're looking, you know, towards how to make it great rather than sort of looking over your shoulder and, and hoping that um, you're not finding problems. And so, and, and obviously, you know, with Neom having, you know, technology and, in the, you know, being a technology company, it's also great that then, you know, we've got the, those people on call to be part of the process and, you know, like, I mean, I'm head of digital, but I'm not, I haven't been an engineer, so, um, you know, it's been great each time that we've had, you know, you know you, one of your lead architects or equivalents, you know, as part of that process. I mean, that's an important point, like, when the hackathon isn't just that one day where you present your ideas and then, um, you know, hopefully get a trophy. Um, hackathons, uh, at least how we've envisioned it and executed, take place over months. And what the hackathon that we did together with the ICC gave contestants was access to some of the most brilliant technology minds in, in the um, private sector and allowed them one-on-one -on -one conversations. How's my idea sound? How should I pitch it? How, you know, how should I tweak it? They got real-time feedback from some really talented engineers that um, uh, they may not have had, had access to um, had they not participated. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Like we had uh, dozens of mentors and like from right across the spectrum, from geo, from um, I think Meta, you know, like just from big technology companies who spent hours and hours with these guys and for a lot of them that would have been probably more valuable than, I oh know, no, they would have liked to win, but it was very valuable to them as well. Yeah, no, gentlemen, I have to say, I thought it was an absolutely excellent event. You know, congratulations on, on something that wasn't just delivered well, it was extremely meaningful. Now, I'm conscious that I had a tap on the shoulder, and if we overrun this whole session, then several legends are going to miss their planes. So we'll call time on it there. Oh, Jeremiah Finn, thank you so, so much. And as I said, congratulations on, on a great job. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Rebecca.